Um, so that's what's that's what's been going on with all of this creation. So everything created up until this point has been good. It's been beneficial for man. And then in verse 26, God said, let us make a man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So here in, in this um, scripture, uh, the plural use of God is used, um, Elohim. Again, that's probably like a terrible mispronunciation. I do good to say my own name. So it, it, the, the plural version of God, so we see the Godhead here in this creation part where it's uh, making man and woman, and both man and woman were made on day six, and it says that uh, we are created in the likeness of God. That is, we share some of God's characteristics, which sets mankind apart from the rest of creation. You know, like man alone can know and worship God and relate to God. And so then we have to wonder, like, how are we in God's image? Like, what does that, what does that really mean? Well, I mean, we can show love and mercy and forgiveness, I mean, to a degree. We can make moral choices. Uh, you know, I mean, we can reason, we can learn, we can create, we can judge, we can know and glorify God. But, you know, don't don't make any mistake. We are not God's equal. You know, we can't love like God loves. We cannot show mercy with the purification or with the perfection that God shows. Uh, we can't make the correct moral choice in every case like God does and so on. So how are we not like God? Well, we are born with a fallen nature, a sin nature, if you will, that opposes God's will. Romans 8 verses 6 through 8 says, For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You know, it's, it's only in our, by our faith in Jesus that we gain his spirit so that we can become fully like him. You know, believers, we no longer have that sinful spirit, that fallen spirit that we inherit from Adam. Uh, we get Christ's spirit. We get a sinless spirit. But now our flesh, you know, that sin nature, that still opposes God, and that's the struggle with every believer. I mean, that's the war that is um, that goes on within all of us is, you know, our, our dying sin flesh against this perfect sinless spirit that lives inside of us and you know i think if we're being honest more often than not we fall in line with the sinful part um but that's just i mean that's that's just our struggle in colossians 3 9 and 10 it says do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him so that just you know tells us that once we have that perfect spirit i mean we need to lay aside that old self with its evil practices um, and try to live in that perfect spirit. Now in verse 20, it says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and roll over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. So God blesses mankind here with four things. One, he says to multiply, so to procreate after our kind. And those of you that, you know, have children, they may act like beasts, but I assure you that they're not. So to tell us that we are supposed to procreate after our kind also goes back and has, you know, implies that replacing people um, at some point and so that there will be death again, God anticipating the fall of man. 
the the second thing is that to to fill the earth so achieve a very large population um, you know we don't need to worry about and manage the population god told us to fill the earth um, the third thing is to subdue so take control of creation and then the fourth thing is to rule so oversee and manage creation you know protect creation against abuse and if you are like me your favorite thing to eat is probably a steak but unfortunately in verse 29 it tells us what's for dinner only veggies we are we were all vegetarians and if you're like me you're gonna say well why couldn't we eat meat well what do you have to do to an animal before you can eat it you have to kill it and at this point there's no death so if there's no death then there's no meat now god's intention was not for death death happens because that is the consequence for our sin god tells adam when you eat of the fruit you will die now yes that meant a spiritual death um, immediately in that moment but in the long term that also meant a physical death and also notice that all things were plant eaters even the animals okay so it and that's that's verse 30 that everything he has given every green plant for food and it was so and we will return to this state of being vegetarians during the thousand year kingdom that is in the book of revelation um, this you know predator prey relationship will cease to exist at that point as it ceased to exist pre-flood here as well and now a very um I guess easy question that a lot of people ask or basic question is what about dinosaurs well yeah there were dinosaurs but dinosaurs are just another land animal they've just been sensationalized you know we've been told that they're millions of years old but we have to remember the earth was created with the appearance of age and this you know thought process of you know the earth being millions of years old i mean that's almost like an evolutionist mindset you know the term for extinct animals is you know just or dinosaurs just like an extinct animal that's all it was and the average size was about the size of a chicken only a handful of them were very large and those are the ones that get like the most attention you know those are the ones the velociraptors and tyrannosaurus rex those are the ones that sell tickets those are the ones that have like really cool amusement parks after them and we have large animals today like look at the giraffe there was only one dinosaur that was larger than the giraffe but i'm not sure like a movie about giraffes running around eating people would sell movie tickets or like be a really cool amusement park i'm not sure uh even the blue whale like that's the largest animal ever that that we have and these dinosaurs that that were here at the beginning of creation they all ate straw and vegetables too and science tells us that they were deposited into the land during a great deluge of the earth which is what believers call the flood and again all of this is sp supposed to be beneficial for man so god knew that some of these larger more vicious ones portrayed vicious ones that they're not going to be very beneficial to mankind in a meat-eating world post-flood and that's why on the ark there's only there's two of every kind on the ark it doesn't say two of every single animal because you know god didn't spend spend six days to create like this really cool place for us to be just to be like ah, well you know after this flood then i'm just gonna have these animals that can eat the eight people that are here um in like a day and then be done with it like he would have just wiped out all of humanity then so again god doing everything for the benefit of humanity for his glory and for our good or our benefit and then verse 31 it says god saw all that he had made and behold it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day and the use of very is intended to draw attention everything was created for mankind so god fills day three with the land animals and mankind 
by slowly creating everything in six days, it shows that God was creating everything for us. Now, the first verse in chapter 2, okay, um, Moses is going to start to, uh, you know, he, he's wrapping up this chapter 1 and moving into chapter 2. And chapter 2, verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their hosts. Now, the purpose for Moses writing chapter 1 the way he did, by having mankind be the last thing mentioned and created, was to make sure that mankind stayed the focal point of creation. Moses takes time in chapter 2 to set the record straight on the events that actually happened on day 6, and we'll get into more details about that on our next episode. But before we do that, let's jump into day 7 as we wrap up this episode. So chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, By the seventh day God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So the Hebrew for this translates into that God ceased from working. I mean, we know that God doesn't get tired and he doesn't need a vacation. Um, So the God rested. It's just he stopped working. He was done. Completion was done in six days. And so on the seventh day, then he rested, and the purpose for that was to set the example. It wasn't because that he needed it. And really, when you think about it, kind of, I mean, like Adam, Adam, Adam never received this command to rest. Like God didn't, I mean, when you were reading through just now what God was telling man and woman, like he didn't say, oh, hey, by the way, on that seventh day, be sure to get some rest. Like he didn't give that to them. Um, It wasn't until the Israelites were leaving Egypt that they received the command to rest. And the reason why they did that, it was to memorialize that event. Okay, God wanted them to remember. Kind of think of it like the 4th of July. On the 4th of July, a document was signed, but we memorialized that day by setting off fireworks. And that was what God was wanting the Israelites to do to memorialize the event of them leaving Egypt. And so God's rest is also not a physical rest. Like, there's such a deeper meaning um, than just not working. Paul in Colossians two sixteen and 17 says, Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day things which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. So God rested to establish a spiritual principle. God does the work of salvation, and we rest in that work by faith. Israel received a Sabbath law to teach this principle to them. We observe the Sabbath by faith in Christ, Um, according to the Hebrew writers in chapter 4, verses 1 through 3 and 9 through 11. So there's your seven days. They're all complete. On the next episode, we will take a look at the details um, to chapter 6. There's a lot to break down um, with that. And so hopefully you'll come back next week and we'll get a really good picture of you know, the creation of man and everything else that happened on day six. I hope you took something away from this episode. I hope uh, maybe you learned something new or are able to, you know, kind of look at the creation story in a different way. That's that's kind of the point after all. So thanks again for listening, um, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one.